Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It's uh, September 26, 2021, and I'm uh, going to do a little homestead update. Uh, it's still super, super dry here in central Oklahoma. When you go outside for a while, you feel like you just got like powder on you. It's so dry and dusty. Uh, we haven't had a rain since August 20th, I think it was, and it wasn't much rain that we got at that, that time. So, And we hadn't had much rain before that. So basically it hadn't rained for... I'd say close to two months, we haven't had a good, nice rain. So it is super dry. Our fall nectar flow for the bees is just, there isn't one. Uh, the goldenrod has bloomed, but there's no nectar in it. It's just a white poofy flower with some pollen, but there's no nectar in it for them to collect. Uh, there may be some stuff for them to forage uh, in these neighborhoods that are around me far off. Uh, you know, a mile or two, they may have flowers and flower beds and things like that that they may be getting some stuff from. But other than that, there's nothing for the bees to feed on. Uh, so they're down here in what's left of the pond uh, getting uh, water out of there. So uh, they're collecting water. And there's uh, another pond off this way, and the, and the creek uh, has water in it if they, need, if they do need water. But, uh, yeah, it is bone dry here in central Oklahoma. We could sure use some rain. So... Uh, in this homestead update, I'm going to start down by the bees and I'm going to ride the four wheeler around this time and just kind of show you some stuff that's going on, make it maybe it'll flow a little faster. And I'm going to show you chickens, composting, uh, where the garden's at. I uh, got some irrigation stuff I'm working on with the well and all that. So uh, we'll run around and show you that real quick. So uh, let's get going. Okay, so the bees are doing pretty good uh, we've lost one hive right there and uh, that's the hive formerly known as hive 13 so it's its new name is hive 99 formerly known as hive 13 <laughs> so it's named after uh, agent 99 on get smart so most of the demographics uh, in my uh, channel subscribers will get that reference but the younger folks may not so uh, our hive count is at 30 even. Uh, hive one back there is right there. Uh, so hive one is a suicide swarm that we caught out here the, the day I harvested honey. So I've been uh, feeding it, trying to get it built up so we can overwinter it. So it wasn't a nuke, now it's in a 10 frame deep. Uh, I don't have 10 frames in there. I'm uh, expanding it up as we go and feed. Have not been able to feed it in probably three weeks because of the dearth i cannot open a hive uh, <clears throat> and uh, the robbing starts immediately uh, usually if i set a frame out uh, that's what starts it so when i do a hive inspection you know you pull your frame out and your first one and set it i set them right there on this the side of the box so i can get through the hive and as soon as they smell any residual nectar honey anything man it's just it's a free-for-all so I was thinking about getting a tote or something and putting that frame in so I, I might attempt a uh, hive inspection so some interesting things we've got going on uh, a couple videos back we found some virgin queens uh, being killed out here on the ground so uh, one of these uh, three hives right here uh, has requeened itself or attempted to so I need to do an inspection on those three hives and uh, check them out and make sure they're queen right uh, I suspect it it might be this one here on the end because it's not a stronger hive uh, obviously because I've got a top feeder on it so I'm trying to get it built up so they may have uh, taken care of their queen or the queen failed and uh, and they had a bunch of new ones so so to get a mated queen this time of year is the odds are not in your favor <laughs> also we had a suspected uh, viral infection right here on this uh, hive nine so there were a lot of crawler bees out here on the ground in front of it and uh, they weren't dead but they did die the next day and i'm pretty sure they came out of this hive uh, I did go into it that day and it looked okay uh, strength wise I did not you know go through it thoroughly and look for the queen because uh, the robbing issues but uh, it seemed to be okay so 
I need to do an inspection on these four hives. Uh, check these three for queen right and check this one just for overall health. So uh, that particular uh, virus, uh, from what I understand, it comes from the queen once she gets infected from a mite and she passes it on through the colony and the colony eventually dies out. Uh, that colony, uh, the, the hive itself is in good condition. The top box has lots of honey in it. That's a really heavy hive there. So they're set for winter other than uh, having that issue with the virus. Uh, haven't seen any more uh, die off out in front of it. So we're on our second uh, oxalic acid treatment, speaking of mites, uh, to kill them off. So I've gone through them twice. Uh, the last one was uh, Wednesday, I believe, and this is Sunday. Uh, so I will hit them again uh, probably in midweek this week, and that'll be their third treatment. And I'm probably going to do a couple more. Hives down here out in the sunlight, they're doing uh, okay. The last one on the ends are uh, Wildflower Meadows uh, Gifted Queen, and that hive is built up good. I've got a hive top feeder on it and I filled it one time and I think it's probably going to be the last. I don't want to get them too honey bound but uh, or fake nectar bound, but uh, anyway, it's it's doing okay. Uh, this hive here with a red on the bottom, uh, it's got a hole in the side. I need to do something with that, give them a new box or duct tape it because it's not a big hole, it's, it's a corner uh, breakdown where uh, you know, beekeepers push on the corner with their hive tool. It's in the back, but uh, and that uh, breaks it down, and and that's that's where it started rotting. So I need to build that up. But yeah, uh, so you can see there's hive top feeders on several of these. Uh, those two hives just didn't do well through the year, and that one has one. That particular hive right there, I can lift it. Uh, real easy it's very lightweight so I've been giving them full hive top feeders uh, and it's been a couple weeks since I filled that up made my trip to Walmart and I stocked up with a hundred pounds of sugar they all think I'm a bootlegger there but uh, anyway uh, I'm gonna mix up some sugar today and I'm gonna at least fill the hive tops uh, many of these have an internal feeder as well uh, frame feeder uh, Some of these over here have frame feeders and I'm not able to get into them. I'm just afraid to open it up uh, But I might give it a try today uh, Give one a shot and if it works, I'll keep moving. But if not, uh, I just won't even attempt it anymore But uh, that's about it for the bees uh, the two back here. They're doing good. I Need to get those moved. I say that every year I need to move those. <laughs> I need to get them out here in the main area. So that's hive 29 and 30 down there. But uh, And we've lost the one, like I said. And the one on the end down there is in position 31. So we got 31 positions filled. And that box there is just empty. There's a... Uh, oh, the state fair cutout. I did a cutout at the state fair. Got the bees out of the lemonade stand before, right before the fair started. And uh, got them down here, set them up right there in that spot. And uh, they got robbed out. Uh, I didn't have honey in there with them. Uh, just the, the honey that was in the frames with the brood that I rubber banded up. Uh, they got a whiff of that and wiped them out. And uh, the bees were all gone. And I had the queen in there in a clip. So the queen was still there in the clip. And the bees went up here in this tree. And... Uh, so I shook them out into the nuke box and dumped them back in there. And uh, cause I thought they just absconded. I didn't realize they were robbed out yet until I looked later uh, closer at the comb and saw, oh, they'd been chewed up and ate up. So I put them back in and they flew back out and they went into an even higher tree. And uh, so I didn't have my vac because it was at the state fair with my grandson. So two days later, I got my vac, I vacuumed them out, and I moved them up, up at the red barn, way back over here, on the other side of that, under the awning. 
and I set them up over there and they were doing good there for two days and the second day I went out there after work and uh, I had just released the queen that afternoon at lunchtime and the, the it, I went over there after work and it was just a swarming robbing frenzy and uh, I threw a blanket over it uh, got them got this robbing stopped on the box but uh, and I had I was feeding them with a jar feeder so there was some stuff in there for them to rob and uh, I guess they got a whiff of that but I checked it uh, that evening once all the bees were gone there was nothing left in there no bees nothing so they they took off again don't know where they went I looked in the trees around I didn't see them so state bear state fair bee story kind of a sad one but we uh, did a service to the state fair anyway. Nobody got uh, zapped by bees there. Okay, let's uh, let's go on to our next stop. So uh, this time of year, uh, before I mow, I walk around out here and I pick. Uh, grass burrs it's uh it's kind of like a goat head but it's not near as bad but they stick in your pants and they spread and they they stick in your socks and they stick in your skin and they'll they're they're painful when you get them so i've been i've got probably five or six five gallon bucketfuls of those dang things uh, so before i mow i walk around and get everyone i can because i don't want to mow and just spread that nasty seed around but uh, just a quick little thing there okay so you might remember right here we had the big giant white tank it was a 2000 gallon cistern tank and uh it was in this area so i had it installed plumbed and about two-thirds buried and i got busy doing other stuff and i didn't get it uh, buried all the way i had it about oh i'd say three-fourths full of water i had it full up to where it, the top starts doing the little dome shape and uh, we had a big rain and that rain would all uh, go out in here and it went down into the hole where it was not quite buried and that sucker floated up a little bit uh, couldn't get it to go back down uh, I filled it all the way the water it wouldn't go all back down because silt got underneath it so I had to pump it out and uh, pumped all the water out with the, the pump that was in it and it floated up grabbed my tractor and pulled it out so it sat there for a long time finally I got this uh, I got the the hole cleaned out got the tank back in and uh, got it buried properly tamped in packed and tight plumbed so it's it's all set up so uh this uh this connects to a water well and it's a low producing water well uh, it makes 150 gallons a day is what i estimated so we got our 2000 gallon tank here and i left a little uh, uh pipe right here so if I need to put water in it with a water hose, I can do that right there. And that's also if I, I go ahead and put uh, gutters on this, this building. It's a 30 by 60 building. And on the back side, there's a 15 foot lean to on the side. So there's another uh, 15 by 60 over there. But uh, it's kind of a neat setup the way it all works. So it pumps up from the well twice a day and uh if you can see down in here that uh that little blue thing is the uh the float switch so it's down right now that the uh well can't keep up so the well pumps uh twice a day until it it runs the pump dry and the pump tech shuts down the uh the well pump so you don't burn up the well and it'll do that twice a day and uh, then there's a pump in here that supplies all of my out faucets so uh, or hydrants so there's one right there and uh, 
I, I can also, if I want, I can switch some valves uh, up on the hill on the other side of the house where my city line comes in. I can flip a couple of valves around and I can switch it all back on city. It just back pressures all this with city water if I want to do that. So uh, the pressure tank and all the controls are in here that controls all that. But I, I'm trying to keep it full for when uh, we do get a big rain. Uh, I don't want this sucker floating again. Man, that would suck big time. I don't think it will. I think this dirt will keep the water away. I also built this berm uh, so the water that's coming off the house and down the drive that tends to go this direction, it'll divert it away. I already had had a berm built right there to keep it away from the the side of the barn right there uh, where those two doors are because we didn't want water getting up over the sidewalk. But back over this direction, we didn't have that problem. But I went ahead and extended that berm uh, on down this direction. So I had a big pile of dirt left from all this. And uh, I'll show you what I did with that real quick. So a lot of the dirt went right here and uh, that I didn't use for uh, this other project and I'm going to show you that right now. While we're here, <laughs> so this is the new garden that didn't make it because uh, of too much rain in the spring and uh, it was just too wet it was a swamp so these tomatoes here that you see are the ones we grew from seed that we couldn't put out until june and uh they're not they didn't done haven't done well at all uh, it's just too hot and dry it's too late to put them out uh, for one thing uh, but they are starting to put on a tomato here and there that uh, we put down this weed barrier so we'd have us a nice, you know, weed-free tomato garden, two rows of it, and uh, that just didn't work out. Uh, the, the asparagus that I started from seed uh, is coming in right here, and I do have some more that's uh, in the apartment up there in that barn that uh, I'll keep in there and overwinter in there, and I'll plant that back out here in the spring. But it's just little little bitty sprigs. But this uh, asparagus here is from last year that overwintered and survived, and it's doing good. So we might be able to harvest a little bit off of that right there next year. So I, uh, last time you saw this compost pile, it was all covered with weeds. So uh, I got all that taken off of there, and uh, so that pile was right here and that's been moved over and put into the garden uh, in the very center so i dumped all of that compost and it had been working for quite a while uh, two three years we've been working on it so that row right there is all of that where that compost was I had chicken manure garden scraps uh, yard clippings leaves all kinds of stuff in there to get that dirt better so I'm going to put a low tunnel right here and do cold weather uh, winter crops. So that's my plan right there. And then over here, I got from Haas Tools some uh, radish that you plant in the winter that digs down deep and it's to loosen soil and condition soil and also winter rye. So I'm going to cover crop this spot right here. And I've also started an irrigation project so here's my poly pipe coming in and i'm going to run a drip hose off of this the same kind i have in my flower beds up at the house because i had some extra so i'm going to run drip lines off of this i'll uh, probably run four uh, every every 12 inches and the drip line uh, has 12 inch space emitters and uh, i'll probably run some over here too and uh, I'll have this on two separate circuits for each side so I can do one or the other uh, 
or both at the same time. So uh, I'll hook all that up. So this poly pipe here, I'll just leave laying out uh, out in the open, visible so you can see it, but it's gonna get buried on up. So let's talk about that while we're here, the uh, drip irrigation system. So man, you can see how hard this ground is. Uh, these clods, man, you can't, you can't break that with a hoe. Uh, it breaks your hoe. I busted my hoe with the end out of it with that stuff. But those big old clods, they are horrible. But I used a middle buster plow to plow that all up. And I got my hoe and I dug out the little trench. Uh, I know it's it's not below the freeze line. That's okay. This uh, black poly pipe, that's uh, no big deal. It just expands and stuff like that. It, it'll be fine. But uh, I'm going to run my timers right here off of this hydrant. Uh, so one will be from my garden and the other is going to it branches off either direction and it's going out to my fruit trees so these fruit trees get dry out here you know this crappy soil you can see when we planted these fruit trees we knew the soil out here wasn't the best but uh, we figured things could live in it if you watered it but uh, turns out that's really not the case things don't do well in it at all but uh, now when we plant a tree or something we'll dig the hole out real big and we'll put different dirt in there with it to get started but these trees are in the virgin soil and these trees I think are seven years old and that's all the bigger they are <laughs> it's terrible I do a uh, side dressing with fertilizer every year and uh, in the spring and uh, I try and water them, you know, at least uh, every other week. Soak them in real good. So now I'm going to have this hitting them on a timer. And uh, I'll soak them real good. So that'll be, that'll be off of the well and the cistern tank and all of that. So it goes on around that direction. And on around the garden and on the other side of the coop, there's uh, four more fruit trees back over in that direction. Well, while we're here, let's... Uh, show you the garden real quick so we're basically done with the garden uh, the cardinal vine is uh, really kicking it or cypress vine I don't know what you call it but uh, it's it's a little bit invasive uh, but we just let it grow up on the uh, walls of the garden hummingbirds and pollinators really like it but uh, we never got anything into these beds here uh, because of all the rain when it was planting time and everything we just didn't get it get any of that done Marigolds turned out good. <laughs> uh, and these marigolds, uh, they come up volunteering here every year and we just kind of move them around and pull them up and put them where we want them. But uh, got a few uh, original tomatoes we planted in here that are finally starting to uh, make a tomato every now and then. And the cilantro's coming back. Uh, we made quite a bit of salsa. Uh, not from our tomatoes, from our in-laws tomatoes. In fact, that's where my wife is today. This is where our cucumbers were and cucumbers all turned out uh, mainly misshapen. Uh, fat on one end, skinny on the other because they didn't get pollinated correctly. So there's kind of an example. Uh, they didn't get pollinated because when they needed pollinated, it was pouring down rain. And uh, so that affected everything, the honey crop, everything. Uh, I highly recommend these Kentucky uh, pole beans. They make nice green beans. And uh, we put lots of quarts of these up just off of this, this bush right here. And we had uh, Blue Lake uh, green beans blue lake bush beans in here and they're all done basically looks like the weeds are coming up so when here's where the, we had some tomatoes in the middle of these uh, marigolds but yeah we don't we don't haven't messed with the garden hardly at all uh, we kind of given up weeding obviously but uh, st we still got the strawberries going here uh, but they're not putting on anything they're pretty much done for the year but uh, we'll have some nice strawberries next year in the spring 
So they're kind of making their way over into this bed. But not right now. The cardinal vine is, is taken over. Cypress vine. So that's the raised bed garden. Uh, this watering system over here worked out really good this year. So uh, I got it on a timer. It runs twice a day, uh, 15 minutes, and it's hooked into that faucet there. This is the kind of timer I'm going to use for the fruit trees and the other garden. But it takes uh, four AA batteries. I was concerned about that, but it seems to have worked fine. But uh, through the garden, I've got uh, that same irrigation tubing I was talking about, that drip line, that brown stuff there. So there's an emitter every 12 inches and uh, it runs twice a day. I've still got it running uh, and it uh, it keeps it moist but not not you know swampy and it, it works good. Over on this side I think there's four in these middle beds because they're wire for irrigation lines and there's three on this one that goes all the way around all the way to the strawberries. So back over here by the compost uh, I've got the new a new pile going now and that's right there so that one was uh, one space over and uh, I moved it on this way and uh, so that one's working so gonna put all the garden waste and the next chicken coop clean out will go right here and then I'll move that on top of that so Wood chips are mostly used up up in the, the flower beds at the house. Going to be taking out uh, these trees right here as soon as it cools off. Going to chip all that uh, to finish up the flower beds. And uh, this stuff right here, I'm going to chip it and that's going to go into the compost because there's all the leaves and the little twigs in it. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to shoot that right into here and... Uh, let it decompose and uh, help build that soil up. All right, where were we? Let's get back down where I showed you where I was gonna put that dirt. So another kind of new development uh, out here is over here. So this was a heavily wooded area so I'm crossing property line now. This is my neighbor's place. So my neighbor sold it to someone uh, that lives down the road here. And they are developing this and they're gonna put a house in here. So there was a trailer right here, an old dilapidated trailer that the guy lived in. And uh, this was all heavily wooded. And uh, I think this is 13 acres it goes all the way around that that direction but the creek where I shoot a lot of my wildlife videos is just below that pad just over the edge so all that wildlife comes up that creek and back this direction to my place and uh, yeah so I haven't had a lot of deer shots lately on the videos and uh, bobcats were gone for quite a while, so I don't know if that, this had any effect on it or not. He said he wants to keep it wild, uh, so, but he's got a nice pad built here. Nice, uh, nice pretty big tree there, but there are a lot of big trees in here they took out, you know, and I understand that. Uh, I would want a nice area for my house too, but just thought I'd show you that. And they built the drive up. The drive used to be a big dip, and now it's, it's flat. So, yeah, and they're going to need that to get, get their supplies in here to build this house. But, yeah, it's a, it's a nice, nice lot he made it into. But hopefully that doesn't affect our uh, wildlife coming in. Okay, so here's where I put this dirt right on the pond. So kind of give you a reference of where we're at. So that land I showed you where they cleared it is right here so this is the property line fortunately they left you know all the trees that were on their side uh, for privacy between the two pieces of land that uh, in some previous videos you know when it was raining real hard in the spring just flooding the place 
uh, I actually had some water get over this dam because uh, the spillway uh, is a little bit off uh, apparently <laughs> and uh, I have a, a drain over there a pipe but the pipe couldn't keep up it was coming over so fast but I do have a spillway part if it gets high enough uh, right over here once it gets high enough it's supposed to go on its own over the right and behind the dam but it wasn't uh, it was going over here first so I've raised this up with that dirt and I brought probably 20 front end loader buckets to uh, build this up and uh, it went over the back side right there in that area and it also went over right here over the back end of there so hopefully that's built up good now and uh, any water that leaves the pond will go over the spillway Here's the water well. Uh, I still need to get the uh, power line into PVC. Right now it, it comes out of a PVC pipe up there and uh, I need to hook this pipe onto it right here and get that uh, protected and get this buried. And I need to transition the from that one and a quarter uh, to a smaller size that will go up in into this right here and get this all secured don't want these open wires hanging around here I've been waiting for it to cool off uh, before I start working on this project but uh, I can probably knock that out in a day okay quick update on the chickens so we've got 24 chicks that are growing pretty fast and they're all over the place but uh, there's some right here so we've released them quite a while back uh, this is our introductory cage so we put them out here in this brooder uh, so the the six original big chickens that were in here could get used to seeing them and also uh, after a while we open this part up so the little chickens can go in and out and the big chickens couldn't get to them in there uh, so they've all acclimated now and they're doing fine uh, the pecking order's been established there's one of the original chickens but uh, so there's six big ones and six and uh, 24 of the the smaller ones so that's a buff orpington and we have 12 Americanas and six uh, white and true blues. So the white ones are Americanas. And they should start laying sometime this winter, which they won't lay much in the winter uh, anyway. But once spring comes, we're going to have a bunch of eggs. <laughs> It was so hot uh, when we put them out here. It was like 100 degree days. I uh, put this uh, partial shade filter over them to help keep that cool in there because they were getting pretty hot. You know, keep lots of water on them. And we've also added for the hawks this uh, netting. This is a heavy duty net and uh, it goes throughout the whole coop. So you can see this run that goes all the way around the garden it's covered there and we have on the edges it's uh, lined with a uh, parachute cord goes through every hole in and out all the way around the edges we still have the garden side we need to finish up because uh, right here there's no parachute cord it's just hanging on uh, nails and things that are over here and we got a few zip ties holding it but uh, we use zip ties for temporary you know to get it where you want it and then we come back with with the parachute cord after that so you can see the goldenrod 
it's all blooming but yeah there's no no bees on it and all the way around here so this is a two by four wire two by four holes and there's an electric wire midway up and there's electric wire at the top so if a raccoon or anything tries to climb uh, it'll get shocked by the hey Roddy it'll get shocked by that uh, this keeps the hawks out and probably anything coming over the top it's going to deter it a little bit as well that took us a couple days to get all that put up uh, this is this line right here is where we join two pieces together and uh, it's man it's it's tough doing all that it's good to have a helper when you got someone uh, helping you to put that up so here's the main coop and uh, I added a nesting bar there we're probably going to need to add another one or two for all these chickens and there's the nesting boxes so uh, this window here has a plexiglass window that I can shut in winter so they still get light uh, and on the outsides both of these windows have shutters so I can shut these and uh, shut them up so uh, the wind doesn't get in there yeah, so chickens so far are doing really good, the new chicks, and uh, the coop is pretty much done. So there's no danger of hawk attacks, predator attacks, so the chickens should be safe. And uh, we kept our Premier One fence controller, solar controller on all of this uh, these electric wires that are going around the, the top and the middle so uh, yeah that thing is is solid now no worries about losing any more chickens okay the uh, gladiolas are still making a comeback from the, the massive freeze so I think they're gonna make it but uh, that's basically been what we've been doing with these <laughs> this year is nursing these back so uh, I'm just going to walk around. I'm not going to talk a lot about a lot of these because you've seen them before. But they're a lot bigger now, all of these plants. So watering these twice a day with the uh, sprinkler system controller, man, it's made a big difference. So she's starting to train that rose bush up. Uh, these dahlias, man, they are amazing. Uh, she, she put some of these on Instagram. But that one back there, there's one bigger out front. But man, they're really pretty. And this rose bush here is going to go, it's going to get moved. It was supposed to have been a bush and not a climber, and it was a climber. So we're going to have to move it. We're going to move it back there on that trellis. But this is where we run out of wood chips. But yeah, this area here, this is the south side of the house. It's turned out really pretty. And this is the west side. And so right now it's all going to be in a shadow. <laughs> but there's a rose. Here's some more of those dahlias this one's not the great big one but they're pretty and look at that dahlia there man that's not one of the biggest ones either but that's the plant that makes the big really big dahlia flowers wave petunias begonias we grew those begonias from seed And there's some mums in there that are going to really take off. That one's starting to. Uh, here's one here. 
so as it gets cooler that that whole big ball there will be in bloom of some color and my office is right here so when I work during the day I get to look out at all this and uh, watch the hummingbirds I think the hummingbirds are starting to slow down they're starting to migrate and this hibiscus here this has been one amazing plant uh, all year long man it it puts out these giant blooms and there's just waves of them that come and go you know those flowers only last you know a day maybe two and then they just wilt and fall off but that sucker got big there's another one over there and it got some kind of disease and it just didn't thrive like this one did but man it about took over the whole area there Yeah, so you can see the irrigation line. So this gets watered twice a day for 15 minutes. This is the north side, elephant ears. She just trimmed them up. A lot of the, some of the leaves that were, uh, you know, getting old and dying off. And I have valves over here. So on this north side, it can get too wet. So I can shut this off. In fact, I may need to because it's starting to cool off now. And this bed can get too wet on the north. Yeah, so thanks if you made it this far. These homestead updates are kind of long, I know. Uh, and I could make it two videos, but, you know, if you want to see both, just watch one long one. You know, watch, watch it later if you want to see the rest. It's the way I look at it. I don't need to have two more videos out there when I could just do it with one. Uh, the bee videos, I try and keep them, you know, about 15 to 20 minutes, but I know these will get sometimes around a half hour. Hopefully I can get this one shorter. But uh, anyway, so you got to see some new stuff uh, and uh, the, the watering system and all that. So hopefully that I can get that done here in the next week or so when my supplies come in. But that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out and uh, we'll have you some uh, beekeeping videos uh, coming up pretty soon, I, I think. So uh, y'all take care.